Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we'll be taking a look at my one monitor setup, something that I have been building over the past three weeks and serves as the place I am working, gaming and streaming at. It can truly do it all. I'll cover everything I've added in terms of gear and tech to make it work like I intended it to and what areas are most likely to upgrade to make it even better. I'll also show you how I try to sort my cable management and how I have tried to keep most cables out of sight, even if a lot of accessories and things I need have to be plugged in constantly. Everything that I show you will be linked in the video description along with the timestamps. So if there's any part you're particularly interested in, be that on the working, gaming or streaming side of things, or you just want to rewatch a specific moment later on, feel free to use them. Alright, so this is the desk that I'm using and it's a motorized standing desk from Disktronic. They're a German company that manufacture all of their desks in Germany and in my opinion they're doing a pretty good job. The desk seems sturdy even when at its standing height and the motors are pretty quiet, being a mere quiet buzz when adjusting. Now most of the time I will be sitting at the desk, but since I happen to be pretty tall, adjusting the desk to a sitting height I'm comfortable with is a real game changer. But when I feel like it I have the option to stand, which sometimes is very convenient during a long live stream. I've gone for an all black star, so I've got the black wooden top and a black metal frame and I really like the look of this combo. The only downside to it is that any kind of dust or fingerprints are extremely visible and I have to clean it a tad more often than I would like, even if it's not a big deal overall. One thing I would have liked to see though is better cable managing options. They've put some effort in by adding pre-drilled cable holes to the wooden top, but no tubing or trunk that would help running cables down to the floor. But I will show you later how I managed to clean up the cables for the most part. So right in the center I've got my monitor, which acts as the bridge between all of my devices and is the only reason I am able to pull a one monitor for everything set up off. I am using the Gigabyte m 32 U, which is a 32 inch 4K 144Hz monitor with an IPS display. I've only had it for the past 5 weeks now but it's safe to say it's the best monitor I've ever used. It has a matte coating which is great for viewing angles and the specs make it great for creative work such as video editing or thumbnail creation as well as gaming. The experience is truly fantastic, considering it does all those things in one package. The design is quite sleek, it doesn't look too gamery and only features a Lycra Gigabyte logo on the bottom center. It also features a KVM switch, two HDMI 2.1 ports that are perfect for next-gen gaming as they transmit a 120Hz refresh rate, one 1.4 display port and a USB-C port, as well as a built-in hub with three USB 3.0 ports and a 3.5mm jack. When choosing a monitor for this setup it was very important to me that I could use it for everything. No matter if I wanted to be a bit creative and do either some client work or make my own videos and then switch to gaming or streaming with the push of a button immediately, it had to be able to do it all. For that, a high refresh rate that needed to match the one on my MacBook for work, as well as allowing for a smooth gaming experience was a must for me. With its 32 inches, it's big enough for working or editing videos as well as opening multiple windows at the same time, but it's not too big so it won't look ridiculous on the desk that I have. This monitor ticked all the boxes and although it's not the best at anything, it is an incredible all-rounder. I have it connected via display port to USB-C cable to my MacBook and use the two HDMI ports for my PC and PlayStation respectively and they all work like a charm. On the left side of my desk I've got the 16 inch M1 Max MacBook Pro in clamshell mode which I use to do all of my creative and not so creative work on. This thing is used every single day to answer emails, edit photos, create thumbnails and edit videos. It's also what I use to write my scripts, plan my videos and do client work. It sits here roughly 60% of its time and the rest it moves with me across my flat as well as to wherever I need to go. But while it sits on my desk it does own this aluminium dock that matches its color quite nicely. It keeps it out of the way as I don't really want to use it as a second monitor and it adds to the overall aesthetic like that in a quite nice way. Now one thing that the monitor unfortunately can't do is charge my MacBook while it is connected to it as the power distribution via the USB-C port is capped at 10 watts which is far from enough to power my MacBook on its own which is why I still have my MagSafe charging cable plugged in as well as a smaller USB-C docking station because I need the ports. It's by far not the cleanest solution out there but it's the best I could come up with right now. Unfortunately that also means that whenever I take my MacBook with me I have to unplug three different cables, leaving a bit of a cable mess behind me before I plug everything back in next time. Which is why the first thing I would probably improve upon is to buy a real docking station that would allow me to rock a one cable solution as well as hide all the cables I need plugged into my MacBook under the desk like the rest of them. But since good docking stations also cost good money that will be improved upon sometimes later in the future. 
Right, so just next to my MacBook, I have my old PS4 Pro. In its place used to be a PS5, but since getting a new TV in our living room, I just prefer having it plugged in there. So whenever I have friends over, we can play a quick game of whatever while sitting on the couch and share the fun. Even if my PS4 Pro acts as a kind of placeholder since moving my PS5 over, it is fully plugged into my monitor as well as into a capture card. So whenever I feel like playing a PS4 game on stream or just simply want to play while my girlfriend is using the TV in our living room, I can do that. Granted, I don't use it that often anymore between my PS5 and PS5, See, but if I ever want to, it's there. After beta is buying a second PS5 for this setup, but it really doesn't make a lot of sense given that the other one is just a few feet away and I mainly game on my PC nowadays anyway. Speaking of which, on the other side of my desk, propped up on an IKEA Alex Draw unit, sits my custom built PC. This is where I mainly game and stream on these days and it is really due an upgrade. The drawer unit is just for general storage and miscellaneous tech and has an added bonus of being able to hide some cables. My PC was always meant to be more functional rather than serve an aesthetic purpose, but after all these years there are really a lot of things both externally and internally I would like to change. For example, although I don't mind the fact that the Ryzen 7 5800X CPU I upgraded to PC last year with sits on an ATX form factor motherboard, I quite like smaller ITX PCs. But since I am quite content with the port my motherboard provides, I'd probably go for a new case that isn't 8 years old and add a new CPU cooler for that same reason. I'd also like to be able to add a few fans for airflow as well as finally get a nice new graphics card, as this one is still my old 1080. And even though it was great for 1080p gaming and quite ahead of its time, it's been 8 years now. Games are much more demanding nowadays and I daily drive a 4K 144Hz monitor the graphics card has a hard time keeping up with. Ok, so this is where the fun begins. One of the biggest challenges when building a Mac PC hybrid setup that also includes a console and is supposed to be ready for streaming at any time is to connect everything together. I want to have the option to control every single piece of gear with every device so they're all interconnected. This comes in very handy for audio as that was probably the biggest hurdle overall. To record my voiceovers on my Mac as well as take client calls and stream on my PC, I use the Shure MV7. It's a smaller USB version of its bigger brother the SM7B and although the quality is far from being the same, I still think it sounds great and even better with the SM7B pop filter I added. So the reason I opted for a USB microphone, its portability and plug and play functionality aside, is so I could easily use it on two separate devices that don't have the same operating system. For that I installed a USB-C splitter on the bottom of my desk with some velcro straps and ran a cable to my MacBook and another one to my PC, so that with the push of a button I can switch from one device to the other. It's a quite clean solution and has been working great so far. I paired the mic with an Elgato low profile boom arm, which I think is by far one of the most convenient and cleanest looking out there. It's functional and has these cool magnetic cover plates that allow for the cables to run inside of it, making for a much better cable-free look. Since I not only need to record audio but also need to hear the sounds coming out of my devices, I opted for a pair of headphones that can do it all. I haven't gone for speakers because I frankly don't need them and I much prefer having everything neatly ran to my headset. It is something I might get on a different setup in the future but for this one I am very content with my SteelSeries Nova Pro Wireless. The reason I specifically went for those, besides the great sound, improved comfort thanks to the Wicked Cushions ear pads and overall control is the connectivity. The base station is what truly separates them from other headphones and allows for a great and convenient experience. It has two USB inputs which I'll run to my Mac and to my PC. They also have Bluetooth capabilities. So if I want to connect to my phone for a call or take them with me on the go, I can do that. To make sure I'm lit properly when streaming, I'll use the Elgato Keylight. Its bright offers a lot of control and thanks to the software I can use it from whichever device I want. And when I don't stream, it serves as a very useful light regardless. On the left side of the wall, I've got my Go the client wall light that I mainly use to create a relaxing atmosphere but it can also double as a fill light when the camera is on me. Around my desk I attached a Govi RGB light strip. It gives off a nice glow and once again just makes for a comfortable atmosphere. Right so above my desk I installed two separate IKEA shelving units for holding up some random items that serve as the core. A plastic plant from IKEA, a Pikachu plushie, an iPhone 15 Pro box, I wonder where I've got that from, and a PSA graded Pokemon cast. And this in case you were wondering is a snake plant and the only real plant in my whole room. I also have a felt desk mat on my desk and on it are resting my MX Master 3S and my MX keys. Both of them are very probably the best keyboard and mouse combo I have ever used. The keys are low profile but fast and responsive and give great feedback when you're typing and the mouse is well shaped and clicks nearly silently. 
And something that I always try to keep on top of, as announced earlier, is my cable management. I spend way too much time on it every time I add another cable bound device. And even though it didn't come out as nice as it could have, I'm pretty satisfied. Given that, with the standing desk, it's not quite as easy. As any cables that are attached to the legs need to be able to move when a table goes up and down. So instead of running all the cables that need a power outlet down to the floor, I attach the power socket to my cable management tray under the desk. So everything I need to unplug and switch for anything else is now much closer to the device itself and much more accessible. Then to hide all these cables even more out of sight, I used Velcro cable ties combined with double-sided tape Velcro straps to attach the tie to the bottom of the desk as well as to the legs themselves. That means that there are no cables hanging down or lying on the floor. Keeping on top of cable management probably won't be that much of an issue for other people, but that's how I do it myself. And this is it. This is my one monitor for everything setup. Overall, I'm pretty happy with what I've built, even if there are a few things I'd like to improve upon in the future. It's pretty simple looking, but that was kind of the idea anyway. I wanted it to be functional and do what I needed it to do without unnecessarily complicating things. Thank you so much for watching. If you could smash that like and subscribe button, that would really help out the channel as we're just getting started. Until next time.